there's two phases in a man's life before he turns pro and after he turns pro and the top one percent the guys that you admire at some point in their life they made the conscious decision to turn pro and then the other 99 percent they're the guys that never even understood that there was this decision to make to turn pro and upgrade your life so in this video, I'm going to give you tips for turning pro. What does it mean to be a professional as a man? And how do you get there? Most young guys, and this is me through and through when I was when I was sort of coming up, 16 to probably 22, life before turning pro looks like this. Losing your wallet, unexpected bills, catching you out. You're never sort of caught up on your credit card bills. Getting a girl pregnant or fucking around with girls and, and not wearing a condom. And waking up not knowing what you did the night before. Just messy behavior. A messy house. You don't get your car clean. You got a smashed up iPhone. You say too much. And in general, the guys that have not turned pro yet are a liability to everybody around them. And a liability to themselves because they're not taking life seriously yet they are thinking that one day they'll they're sort of sharpen up their act and with most guys you see this happen at like fucking 40 years old 40 years old the test lowers a bit they get things under control and, and they start to make more money and become more successful that's why the majority of guys become more successful in the back end of their lives when they're 40 50 years old they start to earn the most money they've made because they finally calm down and, and take life seriously and they commit to certain things now you can become a pro way sooner than that when you make the conscious decision to turn pro from the steps that I'll show you in this video. But life after turning pro is slick. Everything seems to fall into place. People respect you more and good things happen to you. When you when you go through life as a professional, you become a guy with a good reputation. Most young guys start off with a pretty bad reputation. I've certainly had a bad reputation at times when I was younger, especially in my university days, for just being a, a fucking maniac. Money comes to you way easier. When you're a professional, you don't slip up, you don't make mistakes. So money comes to you way easier and you don't fumble it, you don't fumble the bag. You feel more confident and you get considerably better looking. As a, as a man, you, you actually figure out your style and, and how you work. So first thing to work on when becoming a pro, and that becoming a pro as a concept is just deciding to take all areas of your life seriously, to stop messing around, to make a conscious decision to be the best in every aspect as a man, compared to an amateur that's letting things get fucked up. And I'll run you through the system that you can use. But this is point number one. When you're a pro, you have personal awareness and situational awareness. When I was younger, I didn't have personal awareness. I'd find myself in situations where I'd always regret coming away from like meeting new people and having said way too much or portrayed myself in a way that wasn't true to me because I was around new people. So I'd say stuff I didn't really mean or I'd tell a little lie about where I was at or I'd just be too vulgar and talk about stuff that wasn't really of any concern to the conversation. And I'd feel that regret. And we know that regret is your guideline. If you're regretting something, you need to stop it. But most people don't think about this, that, that even controlling what you say is a discipline. And the professional has always got himself under control. He knows, he's personally aware. He knows what he needs to say in certain situations. He keeps a strict discipline on his mouth when he is in and around new people to stop himself from saying too much. And he isn't sloppy. He doesn't get fucking drunk all over the place and say stuff that he doesn't mean. The professional is never out of it. He's never in a situation and anything could happen to him because he's under control. He has himself and his surroundings under control. And that brings me into situational awareness. When I was younger, that it, it's a fucking miracle that I didn't have any bad stuff too bad stuff happened to me. I did have some bad stuff happen to me. But as a professional, you are aware of your surroundings. You're aware of what's going on around you. There's so many young guys that I meet that just don't have a clue about what's going on around them. They're either faded because they smoke some weed or they're just not thinking straight. So you could be around them. And I've literally sat with guys where you could take their laptop off the table, their phone out of their pocket, their wallet out of their bag and be out the door with it. And they wouldn't even notice for the next 30 minutes. That's how unaware most guys are. And the professional never lets that happen. I'll give you an example of this from my own life. You might have heard this story before because I did tell it once on the channel. But it was the night of the Conor McGregor Donald Cerrone fight. And I lived in Bournemouth, England. And we always used to love watching the McGregor fights. And we'd get supremely messed up 
we'd get very very drunk and we went to a, a bar down the road from us from our from our uni house that was open till like 2 a.m and the fight was on super early so we were in there from like 10 p.m all the way up until 2 a.m but halfway through that night we wanted to play on the pool table and there was a couple of guys two skinheads fairly rough looking fellas that were playing on the pool table and they just seemed angry and we went over to try and play and they wouldn't let us play in england we line up coins on the table to say how like if you want to play a game you come put a coin on the table and there'll be like a stack of coins for everyone that's in line and then you use your coin in the machine to get the balls out they said they had like 20 coins on the table but there was no one else playing so it was just them and they were like no we want to play our 20 games and i was so faded i can't really remember what happened but there was some kind of altercation and an argument and in the end we played pool and because i was so messed up we didn't realize that once we left this bar those guys had actually waited and followed us home and i actually ended up getting cracked over the head with a crowbar outside my friend's house we ended up in a fight i was fighting one guy on the floor and his mate got out of a van and cracked me over the head with a crowbar i had fucking blood all over my head running down my face the police were called. I was so messed up that I ran off when the police were called because I didn't want to get in trouble. I hid on somebody's roof. And then I went back into the house. I threw up on the floor because I was I was concussed. And we were all so drunk that, that nobody took me to the hospital. Nobody decided to try and see if I was okay. We just passed out. And I woke up in the morning just covered in my own blood. That is the epitome of being an unprofessional. That is stuff that literally could have got me killed from being unprofessional, not being aware that there was an altercation, not being aware that someone followed me home, not being able to defend myself in a way and be aware that someone was going to crack me on the head with a crowbar, not getting myself to hospital. If you ever find yourself, I know that's pretty extreme, but if you ever find yourself in situations like that, then you are being an unprofessional. Right now, that would never, ever in a million years happen to me because I'm so aware, because I'm so clued in, because I'm so sober. I'm so, I've got my wits about me all the time that I never let stuff like that. I'm always scanning rooms. I'm always figuring out what's happened. I always understand if I've had a little argument with someone, I check out where they've gone, things like that. And that is becoming a professional. The next one, improving your style and, and how you look as a man and how you take care of yourself is a conscious choice. It is a discipline in its own right. And it is, the, it is becoming a professional because you, you actually compliment people with your presence when you decide to take care of yourself. A professional comes into a room and people are sort of honoured by his presence because he looks good to the eye. He smells good. He's a great guy to be around. But if you are an unprofessional, you have no concern for what anyone else thinks about the way that you look. And you're kind of going into the world in a sloppy state. And this massively impacts how you're treated. Doors that were previously closed now open if you are a professional and you dress accordingly and doors that could have been opened will stay closed if you if you dress unaccordingly so i don't dress like for example this is more of my new style when i have to do business or i want to look good this is the kind of style i go for like a smart casual and when i when this picture was taken just a about a year and a half ago it was just never something i ever considered but this guy is going to get way more options in business than this guy on the motorbike, even though I still think that looks pretty fucking cool. Dictates how people speak to you and how people treat you as a man. A lot of guys ask me how to dress. The, the best way to dress is to get a good physique and then things look good on you. You can wear standard t-shirts, you can wear standard trousers, plain colors, nice fits, and everything looks good on you. But if you're out of shape, you can get the best designers in the world. It's not gonna fucking fit you the same way. It's not gonna look good on you. A lot of people ask me, oh, how'd you get that uh, shirt tailored? Where's that from? That's just from Hugo Boss, just off the rack. But it just fits my physique well because I've got a decent physique. Your hair, this is one, this is an interesting one. The hair, the unprofessional, will lose his hair, start losing his hair severely, and not cut it. That's like such a key thing to look for in an unprofessional person. Whereas a professional will just bite the bullet, shave his head, improve his physique, and just rock a bold head. For me, you guys will have to comment when it's time for my hair to go, because I know my hair's thinning a little bit. My dad has not got that much hair, so mine could be on the go. Personally, I still think it looks suitable. I don't think it looks unprofessional, my current hair. I don't think it's receding that much to the point where it needs to be shaved. But when that moment comes, I can guarantee you right now, my head will be shaved, I'll get some more tattoos, and I'll rock the look. That's what I'm gonna do. That's what the professional does. He's not holding on to something, trying to hold on to the last few strands of hair in his head. So if you're at a point right now where you're like, fuck, I know my hair is totally fucked. 
<laughs> but I just don't want to shave it. Get that shit saved, shaved off. Get in the gym more. Get dressed better. You probably look 10 times better than you do now. Invest in quality. The professional invests in quality. The amateur, the rookie, he doesn't invest in quality. He just wants cheap and he wants loads of different stuff. If you buy the right stuff, you literally only have to buy it once or twice every, every five to 10 years. If you buy real high quality like bags, leather belts, wallets, all those sort of high-end leather goods. If you buy quality jackets, that sort of stuff. If you buy the cheap stuff, it, it, it wears cheap. So you're much better off saving up more, getting quality items that make you look better. Wallet, belt, and bag should all be premium. You should have the best wallet, belt, and bag you can, you can afford. They do make a big difference. Anyone that's whipping out a fucking Velcro wallet, just slap them in the face. Because Velcro, that's out of style now. You can't be doing Velcro if you're above the age of 13. Often becoming a professional will mean dropping some friends. Because you not only become the people that you hang out with, and you're now becoming a professional, a different person, and if the guys don't come along for the ride, you're going to be very different personalities, and they're going to drag you back down. But also, people judge you on the people that you hang around with. When you are rolling with a group, you don't want to be seen with a group of guys that are making you look bad, because you're automatically put in the same category by women, by other business people, by potential networking opportunities. If you can't bring your boys up, start branching out to some more successful circles and make the transition. I've always found this quite easy to do because you're not breaking up with your friends. They're still your buddies, they're your homeboys, but you just spend less time with them and you're seen with them less. You go and see them every now and again, but you've moved on to bigger things in your life. And that doesn't mean you don't love them. You still love them. You wish them the best. Often the best thing you can do is leave those friends and carve out a new path. And then that's what makes them want to come along for the ride. They see you doing it. But often that means just taking some time away from them, taking a the time away from that security and becoming the, the professional, the man that you want to be, hanging out with people that are professionals and you see how they operate. Often we fall into habits with the places that we go to. If you've always been to the same bar on a certain night and you go to the same few restaurants and places, you find yourself still going there and often they don't suit the new you or the new personality. Once you turn professional, you feel upgraded and this new personality can walk into better places and feel like he belongs there. When you become a professional, you no longer want to be around rookies. That's why I think there's such a premium on high-end places because high-end people will pay to be around other people that are high-end because of the habits, because of the discipline, because they don't want any of that other stuff polluting their brain. And I find this to be the, the case with me. I only stay at the best places. I only get the best transport. I try and surround myself with these people and connections that work the same as me as much as possible. And the way to do that, if you feel uncomfortable right now, is become a professional. The professional dresses like he's allowed in these places, and he does business like he's allowed in these places. You end up with the money because you're not doing the dumb shit anymore. You're fucking working on your business. The professional dials everything in in his business. He works harder on his business. He's more professional. He turns up every day. He wakes up at the same time. He returns calls when he misses them. He's the man that fucking shows up every single day for his business. And it grows and you make more money and you end up in these places. I never used to plan anything. And a failure to plan is planning to fail. Nine times out of ten. If you've got no plan, you don't know where you're going, you can't get any help getting there. As a professional, you're always three or four steps ahead of everyone else. You know where you're going. I'll give you an example. So I'll give you an example. I had to get a taxi to a, an area outside of Bangkok, about 45 minutes outside of Bangkok. And the problem was, once you got out there, you can't like call the Uber app. It's called Grab in Thailand. You can't call the Grab app and get a taxi back because there's no taxis in that area. And I noticed this on the first time of going to this certain area. It was to play uh, Airsoft for an Airsoft thing, which I've, I'll come on to in a second. But I went to go, go and do Airsoft with some guys, and then on the first time, we couldn't get a taxi back and it was a pain in the ass. The second time I went, I paid the driver to come pick us up. That's planning ahead. That's a very simple way of planning ahead. That The rookie would just go and get stuck there again. The professional plans these things in his mind. He knows where he's going. He knows what he's doing. He knows if this plan fails, there's another plan that he could take. He knows if this doesn't work. He leaves plenty of time to get to the airport. He doesn't miss his flights. That's what the professional does. He doesn't rely on others to sort things out. People come to the professional to have problems sorted. That's how you make more money. That's how you get better... Uh, connections because people know all right we're rolling with Jack everything's taken care of there's never an issue when you're rolling with Jack and that's how you want to be known as people as a professional not as a rookie and finally you've got your personal security and paranoia as a man who is a professional you have to realize that the world is not all sunshine and rainbows and a very safe place for you to be 
as a lot of us are raised in that world of thinking like, oh yeah, everything's going to be all right. Everything won't be all right a lot of the time. And I, this was a big smack in the face for me when I got robbed in, in Ibiza over the summer. And as a professional, it comes with the territory. You have to be a little bit paranoid and you have to take your personal security very serious. I don't fuck around with that stuff anymore. The rookie, the amateur, he'll leave his laptop around in a villa. He'll go out without locking the door. He won't put everything in a safe. And having all my stuff robbed in Ibiza just, just taught me that. So I'm far more aware of personal security. As a man, I think it's a great way to be because the world isn't always safe. You should know what to do in certain situations if they go wrong. You should always have a plan because the, the world sometimes fucking throws some curveballs in there and you can end up in bad situations. It's much better to be expecting them and know what to do. Have a plan in those situations. Take care of your stuff. That's what the professional does. That brings me on to the, the airsoft. The reason I do the airsoft is because I think every man should know how to manage combat scenarios. And airsoft, a lot of people are like, fucking airsoft for kids. These guns can fire 200 meters dead straight. They make you bleed if they hit you. It's not a joke. It's not a fucking just some game running around. You have to seriously know how to cover, how to move, how to clear rooms, how to work as a team. We sometimes even have comms, so we're in each other's ears. And you have to know how to cover yourself and fire a gun and fucking sweep out rooms and all that sort of stuff. So that's why I do the airsoft. Anyone who doesn't act this way, identify in your circle immediately and, and tell them that they are a liability. Because as a professional, you stop hanging out with people that are liabilities. If there's a friend that's always getting drunk and then gets himself into a fight and then one of you gets into the fight with him and you get stabbed, that's, that's a personal liability right there, is that friend. And he either needs to be sorted out so that he no longer does dumb shit or you leave the friend and you move on to new circles that's how you need to act as a professional don't be afraid to cut people off don't let people put your personal safety in harm if you're with the boys and something kicks off always jump in there with your boys always look out for your boys but you should be rolling with professionals so if that does happen there's been a reason for it it wasn't his fault but if you've got a guy getting you in fucking trouble all the time the professional doesn't allow that to happen so lads i hope you enjoyed the video it's just my two cents on Turning Pro. There's actually a great book called Turning Pro by the same guy that did The War of Art. I highly recommend reading that. He talks about it in more of a work sense, what it means to turn pro at work. But yeah, it's a great book all the same. Lads, I hope you enjoyed it. Be professional. Stay safe. Get out there. Get it done. See you on the other side. Whoop!